All right, we're back. <clears throat> Came ahead and cut that out of the package, so got our plug. It's just a 3 8 24 thread. You could use a big bolt, but the problem is if it sticks out too much, it rub the frames right here, so it needs to be a thin head. So the correct one's thin. So these go right in here, so you got to pick how you want to seal this up. You can put Loctite on the threads, or you can put a little bit of 3-bond on the threads, or whatever you want to do. Your choice. I do both. First thing I do is make sure it goes in. It does. So I'm good with that. So me, I like using Loctite on them. If you got a good case and no damage, Loctite's fine. Damn, that thing is sticky. Why is that bottle so sticky? All right, this is 290, which is capillary action. So that means it sucks into holes and plugs them up. So you put that on your thread here, and then it should suck itself up and seal in. It's not 100% sealed. It should seal it. At least that's how my theory on it is. Okay, you want to tap on like this. You know it's good and tight. Holding it done. This is six point. And you're holding it down hard so you don't round the thread or round the nut off. Makes it look a lot cleaner. So that's how you do that. So that seals it up pretty good. And then the inside in here it should be good. If you're not sure, you put a little extra Loctite down in there. So this is capillary action, so it'll soak in there and seal it. See how it goes around the whole hole? It just sucks itself all the way around. And it just goes down in the threads and whatever's in there just seals it up solid. If you let it sit for about five or ten minutes like that, it'll set up. And it'll be there. You can see how the whole thing just sucked right on in there. There's no there's no more residue on the top of the bolt anymore like there was. So that seals that thread hundred percent. So it won't leak past it. It also won't come out of the case either. Unless you tighten it down a lot. You have to overcome all that, obviously. Okay, put that away. So you have different lock types for different things, so <clears throat> that's how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a little bit of time to cook off slightly. Not full time though, because I need to work. Okay. Okay, this kit is here. Good time to check for fitments and stuff. Gives that Loctite a chance to set up. So, these here are your skewers over here. There's one there like that. You got a spacer. And you have a snap ring that goes in there and holds it. So, depending on how much clearance you got in your snap ring, is how much up and down float you get on the skewer. Now the more this goes up and down, you can see how the, the other gear on the inside, the worm gear, right there, goes up and down too, which changes your distributor quite a bit. So just changing your ignition time, this is just up and down. So I try to keep this clearance as tight as I can, so we'll put a shim under it. The idler gear doesn't matter if it moves up and down a bunch, it kind of sits where it wants to. So it's not a major player. Make sure it sits flat, not up in the air, we showed that before. And this face here, you look to see what you got there. Now, see, this one's gonna have about zero clearance. So, let's see if we take that space and go like that. Didn't make a difference, we still got clearance. This one has a lot more wear on the outside for some reason, so maybe I'll put that over on this side. This one's flatter, so we'll put it over here. So, this has room to put a shim in here. 
So we're gonna figure out what kind of shim I'm gonna put in there. Okay, so half inch shim. It's a cam shim or it's a rocker box shim. I think that's a rocker box. Rocker shaft shim for a shovel, I think is what that is. Rocker arm shims right here. Should be a tray back in here. Got a little clearance issue right here. You can only go until we hit the machine, see? So it's hard to get to that container back there. We can get to these pretty easy. Okay, so this is Sportster cam shim, this is rocker box shim. So one of these two will work. I think it's going to be the rocker arm. This is the one we're going to use. So we got all different sizes here for those. These are the cam shims here. These are a bigger diameter shim. See how big the hole is on that? Too big, so we're not using knives. These over here we're good with. Okay, so we got a few of these 15 tile left, and that's a 25, which is huge. 25 is too much. 15 will probably work though. These I don't think they make anymore. Well, you have inventory. When they quit making it, you still have it. Okay, that looks like that'll put us pretty close to zero. See how close it is there on the shim. So, you know, there's a couple snap rings over here still sitting around here somewhere. Get this out of my way. There they are, right there. Snap rings. So you go right over the top of the shaft there. Okay, this we're going to put on the bottom down there because we want it on the top. And don't lose that spacer either. So that goes down there like that. Then that goes in there. Goes there. It looks like it's got plenty of room for it. So instead of putting it on, I'm just going to put it over the side like that and see what our end play is. And that will determine how much more shimming we want to do. Quite a bit. Okay. So we're going to take out that 15 tile shim that we had there. And we're going to put a 25 in there. The one that we thought that was too big. Tight fit too, but it goes on. Okay, we're going to take our little washer, which we had laying here. Still got clearance there, you can hear it. Okay. See if we have five thou or seven thou more to go. And the five thou shim. Seven. I'm going to put that underneath the big one. That way it doesn't get chewed up. Again, and we're basically about zero. So, until you put it in, you don't know what you have. So, let's go ahead and put it in there. I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm probably not going to be happy doing it this way, but. Yeah. 
I should be able to work around it being in there, but I don't like putting this in right now, but we're working on it now, so screw it. We don't need this one though. So you gotta do something with the Loctite's drying, so let's go do other things. You lubricate your bushings. Now these are loose, but they're not worn out. Snap ring is used, but still good. Takes a special tool to put it in. It's called fingernails. It's pretty close to zero clearance. You gotta decide you wanna run at zero or not. It's not quite zero, but it's, it's basically is. It's got some drag on it. You hear the clearance? It's only got one or two thou in there. See the snap ring is bent, so it's got like a spring tension on it, so there is tension on it. So if I had two more thou, I'd probably be perfect. But so we got a uh, five thou shim in there. So we got to decide whether we're going to take that out or leave it or what. If you leave it, it's going to have to wear itself in. These are already used snap rings, so they're already worn in quite a bit. So it's one of those deals. Try to get a couple more thou clearance, or you just take the shim out and give yourself five thou and get three thou extra. That's the decision you're going to make. How close do you want to make that thing to zero? So it will eventually wear itself to what it wants. Now, sometimes when you put the cam cover on there, it pushes on the bush and locks everything up. So, this is not 100% given what's going to happen here. So I don't like that drag on that bushing. The bushing is not free, which means there's tension on it. There's tension on that. There's tension on the whole thing. So I don't like it. So now the hard part is getting that snap ring back off. That that's a pain in the ass to do, especially since we've already just pushed it on there. And it's going to want to go cross country on the way off. So. Basically, you got to catch the two corners. Okay, just try to pry it off. And of course, that's not working. So the other thing you do is you hold down one side of it and pull on the other side. And it'll come flinging out of there like crazy. Needs a third hand to get underneath it to hold it up.
which I don't have. Almost. Going to the back side now. Get the front side up. That's where fingernails come in handy. Which I don't have too many of right now. So the other side here is still clipped in. There it goes. It's out. Pain in the ass too, but it's out. I need to squeeze it back a little bit because I know it's tight. I know it's getting stretched when I'm doing all the bending. So you want to come back and compress it back down a little bit. Um, okay. Where's the shim at? It's right there. I'm going to go ahead and take the shim out. Five thousand out. And we're going to run it as that number. I'm not going to fight it. So somewhere between five and seven thousand in play. Preferably be at three to five, but I don't have a shim that's small enough. So I don't feel like fighting it, so we're not going to fight it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. Yeah, I don't need to put this in right now, so I'm not going to. Now we have to fight around the gear. Okay, and this one here will be doing the same thing too when we get to it. So we'll lay it over here also out of the way. Alright, let me get this cleaned up and we're going to glue the case together.